Good morning. It's Mrs. Nieder. Today is Wednesday, April 29th, 2020. It might rain, it might not rain. It's about a 50% chance. So if you see it's not raining, hop outside and have some fun. Next up are our birthdays. We have one special birthday today, and it is for a fifth grader in Miss Cook's classroom. Happy birthday, Allison Dell. We hope you have a fabulous day. Hello, Bearsville. It's Mrs. Buck. I miss all of you, and I hope you're doing well. Big idea. Our big idea of humility may not seem like it, but it is a great way to maximize your potential. People enjoy working with others who aren't selfish or conceited and showing humility demonstrates that you are a person with whom others would enjoy working. Bye. Now I have two fun facts for you. They happened about 100 years apart. The first one was in 1813 when a patent was put on rubber. You're gonna see a short clip here talking about a little bit about the history of rubber. Hey there, and welcome to this brief, brief history, history of, rubber. of rubber. Now I know what you're thinking. How exciting can the history of rubber actually be? Well, my friend, there's more to rubber's story than you may realize. Rubber's been around for a very long time. Thousands of years ago, the ancient peoples of Central America invented a game that used a rubber ball. Historians believe that teams of players would go back and forth trying to keep a ball in the air, much like volleyball using nothing but their hips. Nothing like volleyball. Later variations of this game added the extra challenge of having players get the ball to go through a stone hoop mounted on the wall of the court. This was one tough game. As time passed, these people found other uses for rubber as well. For example, they learned that dipping your feet in rubber suddenly gave you shoes. And coating clothes in rubber made them resistant to water. As it turns out, the native peoples of Central America were not the only ones to be impressed with the uses of rubber. In 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed from Europe to the New World. This started a steady stream of explorers heading to this newly discovered continent. Let's get them, boys! <laughs> Quick to recognize a cool thing when they saw it, these explorers were fascinated by rubber and were eager to take some back with them to show their friends and families and any members of royalty that might be interested in rewarding them for their efforts. With money, fame, power, you know, the usual stuff. The second one happened in 1913 when a patent was put on the zipper. And you're also going to watch a short video on the history of uh, the zipper. Enjoy! The Zipper. 1913. Gideon Sundback invents the zipper. The Swedish-born electrical engineer was hired to work for the Universal Fastener Company and became head designer. He went on to patent the separable fastener. The first big customer was the U.S. military. By World War II, zippers became important for fastening gear and uniforms. It really took off after French designers started using it to do up gentlemen's trousers. In 1937, Esquire magazine declared the zipper the newest tailoring idea for men. And in 1947, Levi's added the first zipper to their jeans. I've never owned a button-up fly and I'm never going to. Give me a zipper any day. The zipper then went on to become the world's favorite fastener. Of course, that completely revolutionized the way that you could, uh, you know, seal your pants, but not only that, you could use it for so many other things in fashion. It's also in purses, uh, in the sleeping bag, in our suitcases. Velcro or, or buttons just won't do the trick. The zipper is the go-to. There are 4.5 billion zippers used each year in the U.S. alone. And zipper mega producer YKK makes enough zippers each year to wrap around the world 50 times. The number of times I have absolutely thanked my lucky stars that I can zip myself up against the elements, all thanks to a Swedish invention. To learn more about Sweden's incredible history of innovation, Watch History Erased. Good morning, Bearsville. Remember me? Mr. Hegarty, your SSO. It's good to uh, talk to you. I would first like to say that I miss each and every one of you, and I miss being at Bearsville every day. Um, today, I am 
going to present you with the question of the day as part of the daily announcements. And my suggestion is that you discuss it as a family. And if you so feel, uh, please respond in the comments after the announcements. Uh, today's question of the day is, what is your favorite chocolate candy bar? Have fun. And I hope to see you all soon.